Hello, I'm Liz, one of Deary's Reference Librarians, and welcome to another episode of Misinformation Busters. Once a week, we tackle a rumor or false slash misunderstood information, and we try to separate fact from fiction. This week, we're going to the movies. Okay, we're watching Netflix, and we're talking about the cuties controversy. So, what's the story? In August of 2020, Netflix announced some of the new films that are premiering in the coming weeks. This included a French film called Cuties, or Mignon, in French. The film actually won the World Cinema Dramatic Directing Award at the Sundance Film Festival earlier this year. And then everyone saw the poster that Netflix used to advertise the film. It featured the young stars in skimpy outfits dancing in a very age-inappropriate manner. It looked like toddlers and tiaras, the motion picture. Obviously, people reacted. Some saying the poster was inappropriate, and those who had knowledge of the film said that it was a complete misrepresentation of the movie. Netflix apologized and removed the poster, but the damage was done. And there was a contingent of the internet that accused Netflix and the movie of normalizing the sexualization of girls and even being child porn. In the time since the film premiered, people's reactions have only heightened. People have called for the film to be removed from Netflix. There's a cancel slash boycott Netflix campaign, and some of the film investigated. Some have accused this of being Obama's doing since he runs Netflix. There was also a rumor that Netflix CEO Reed Hastings was arrested. Also, the IMDb content warning page is full of claims that there was an 11-year-old nude in this film. And of course, people are sharing screenshots and dance clips from the movie, with some detractors even claiming that they skimmed the movie just to find dance scenes. So, what are the facts? Well, I'm going to take you on my journey of trying to figure out what this film was about, because let me tell you, I found that poster to be abhorrent as well. But I have a rule that if you see an angry mob on the internet, go check a source or two before freaking out along with them. Some of this stuff is really easy to debunk. No 11-year-old is nude in the film, and that was confirmed by reviewers and the director. The only nudity is a nude image of an adult that the characters see. And that can actually be done without having young actors see the image, i.e. having it edited in during post-production. The director also made sure that there were counselors on set and that the production met the standards of safety met by the French government. Also, Obama does not run Netflix. He has a production deal with Netflix to make content, and as far as we know, not involved with the acquisition of this film. And Reed Hastings was not arrested. That is just a blatant falsehood. It's actually kind of strange that someone make the jump from this movie looks appropriate to the CEO of Netflix as a child abuser, but that makes sense when you learn that much of this panic is coming from the Save Our Children crowd, which, if you remember my video from a few weeks back, is a onboarding system for QAnon. Also, they've been doing such a great job saving children. Kids Safe, a child abuse prevention organization, denounced the hashtag on the conspiracy, calling promoters of said conspiracy parasites. Well, now that we've got more blatantly untrue stuff out of the way, we can get back to what is rooted in reality, like that poster. That poster is real, and it is bad, as in I hope whoever made that got fired bad. So I decided to check out the French poster, and it really is night and day. That poster is just girls running around with shopping bags, and it makes you wonder if the person who made this poster even looked at the French promotional material. And then I realized there's more to this story and this movie and decided to read up on the director. The director of Cuties is Maimouna Ducouré, a 35-year-old Senegalese French woman. And she was not happy about Netflix's poster either. She found out about it at the same time everyone else did. She was actually focusing on the film's French release at the time, and she only saw the poster after she saw the online backlash. So that Netflix poster wasn't even her decision. But... What was Ducouré's inspiration for the film? Some of it was personal, drawing on her experience as a young girl in France, navigating the expectations and cultures of her Senegalese community and the more liberated French society, which sounds legit. It was also based on an actual event that she witnessed years ago when a dance troupe of 10 and 11-year-old girls performed a very provocative dance in not very appropriate clothes. She was shocked, and then she wondered if the girls understood what they were doing. So she spent over a year interviewing girls and found out a lot about them in relation to social media, culture, and self-perception. 
She says, quote, I came to understand that an existence on social networks was extremely important to these youngsters and that they were trying to imitate the images they saw around them in adverts or on social networks. The most important thing for them was to achieve as many likes as possible. And from there, she decided to make a film that addressed that and the larger issue of the hypersexual culture and the effect that it has on girls. And that actually made me interested in the movie. I didn't have social media as a tween, thank goodness, but I had magazines, I had TV, and I was catcalled by grown men at age 13. So anyone saying that this movie is encouraging the sexualization of girls, hate to break it to you, but we've had that problem for a long time. Also, man, three words, child beauty pageants. From there, I decided to see what critics say, because a director's vision may not always translate to screen. Also, critics judge films based on context, not controversy. And as of writing this, it's at about 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. The general consensus being that while it can be a hard film to watch, it raises some very real issues and has a lot of empathy and concern for the young characters rather than falling into after-school special condemnation. And I've actually included some of the reviews in the sources. The most interesting review for me was from Jennifer Green at Common Sense Media, which is a site for parents and guardians. She gave it four out of five stars and praised it for how candidly it talks about what teens and tweens learn from culture. She even had discussion topics that guardians can discuss with their kids. And what was interesting to me was when I looked at her content warnings, the stuff she described was far less extreme than what the IMDb content warnings described. Hmm. It's almost like IMDb can be edited by anyone, including people who didn't see the movie or want to inflame controversy. Then, I did something crazy. I watched the movie. The whole movie, not just skimming it for the dancing. Seriously, detractors are fast-forwarding to 11-year-olds twerking and only sharing those scenes and images, but they have the gall to say that those who watch the movie for context are creepy. Alrighty. Anyway, the movie is... In my opinion, because film is subjective, rather good. And it rang true to me in many ways. Also, spoiler alerts abound, obviously. The movie is about Amy, an 11-year-old girl who's from a Senegalese community in Paris. She's getting messages that uncovered women are evil, that there will be more women than men in hell, and that she needs to grow up and be a good wife. And it's hinted that she might be married off soon. She even takes on a parental role to her younger siblings. Then she finds out that her father is taking a second wife and she sees how much it's destroying her mother, who can only just accept it. At the same time, Amy is fascinated with the cool girls at school who dress skimpy and dance provocatively. If anything, this movie illustrates how both conservative and liberated cultures can make girls grow up way too fast. These girls admonish Amy's age-appropriate clothing as homeless-looking, but they are so different from Amy's world and Amy really just wants to be part of their clique because it's something different. Amy is 11. I have been 11, and we want to be accepted, and we'll copy what we see our friends and our celebra and celebrities do. Amy wants to fit in, so she learns dance moves to impress these girls. She imitates what she sees on YouTube, and honestly, at first, it's played for laughs because, you know, these girls don't know what they're doing. Then it's horrifying because these girls don't know what they're doing. This movie shows the effects of peer pressure and how far kids will go to seek validation in person and online and how it can lead to dangerous and destructive behavior, which we see in Amy. It also shows how adults fail these girls. They aren't evil or dumb, but they just can't or don't take the time to explain what these girls are seeing and imitating. Some parents aren't present. Amy's mom is forced to deal with the wedding, and Amy's auntie thinks she's possessed. In the school, they just think that banning phones during school time solves all the problems. This movie isn't girls find empowerment through twerking. It's an alarm bell. The final dance scene has been shared a lot, and in some cases, deceptively edited, on social media. But in the film, it is not a moment of triumph. The audience is rightfully horrified and disgusted, and they boo the girls. And the girls become more uncomfortable as they realize the likes they got on social media don't translate to real life, which, that is another piece of horror. Oh my gosh, who is liking that? Ugh, I don't want to think about that. Anyway, Amy realizes that this isn't who she wants to be, and she runs home to her mom. Her mom understands that Amy is going through a lot, and she tells her that she doesn't have to attend her father's wedding. And it may seem small, but it's the first time Amy has been given a choice, and she chooses to be a kid. And she's happy. 
Film writer Drew McQueenie compares the controversy to The Last Temptation of Christ, in which people reacted to, exaggerated, and in some cases just made up stuff that was supposedly in the film. But I think it's closer to the 2003 Catherine Hardwick film 13, which was also about two teens who grow up way too fast thanks to an influence of culture, peer pressure, and ill-equipped parents. And it was also co-written by star Nikki Reed, who was 15 at the time. Reed based it on her own experiences and what she saw happen to her friends. And this movie, I remember it was at the time, had a lot of backlash. It was called Exploitative, and Reed was unfairly labeled a wild child. We keep saying we need to have a conversation about how society affects girls, but when women make films to add to that conversation, there is blowback. I can only imagine the reaction this movie would have gotten now in the midst of the full-blown moral panic of the Save the Children Q crowd. But that's the problem with moral panics. They don't want a conversation and they don't want to solve the problem. They want a villain, and Cuties is the villain of the moment. Maimouna Ducoré has been accused of being a child abuser, and she has received harassment and death threats. But she hopes that people who are concerned will actually watch her movie. Quote, I really hope that once the film comes out, they will watch it, and they will understand that those criticizing me were actually walking the same path as me. She said that the film may be uncomfortable to watch, but she learned through her interviews it's uncomfortable being 11 in the world today, and that adults are not helping kids navigate social media and culture. Personally, I would echo the director's recommendation to watch the film. Even if you don't like it, you can at least have a conversation about everything in the context of the movie. And if you don't want to watch it, at least seek out reviews from objective critics who are not looking to stoke the flames of this controversy, or just look for interviews with this director. Honestly, that's what I do whenever there's outrage online. I look for primary sources and context rather than jumping on the outrage train right away. In that case, you are at least engaging with facts, and it's better than sharing something that might be out of context or outright false. Whatever you do and whatever you think of the film, I can say, based on my findings, that it's really fair to say that the Netflix poster is a gross, in more ways than one, misrepresentation of what Mamuna Ducoré was trying to say with her film. This film is not a 90-minute twerkathon. It's a warning. I mean, it terrified me because I know that when my kids are that age, social media is going to be so much worse. Oh my gosh. In fact, hold on a second. Hey, honey, burn our future children's phones. I don't care if neither exist yet. Just do it. Thank you for watching. And as always, look for sources in the comments. And if you want to do some research, you can use our EBSCO and NewsBake databases available through the library's website. And I'll see you next week.